Setting up Lewis intent vectors is actually really easy. And we make it even easier by making available a, a Lewis app that has some intents in it for you to use without having to train your own Lewis model. To start, let's have a look at the Lewis app and the intents that are in there. This is the demo Lewis app that we've set up for anyone to use. And you can see we have three intents that are set up. Report an issue that can be used for like help desk or something like that. Uh, set out of office, which really is, um, it's used to uh, capture two different dates, a start and an end. And then set up a meeting, which is a little bit more complex and allows you to try and set up a meeting with certain people at a certain date to talk about a certain something. Diving into this set up a meeting, we'll see in the utterances, we've said a number of different ways to set up a meeting. We've identified our entity, so you can see this one is set up a meeting with Mike, who's been uh, classified as a person, and Lisa, who's also been classified as a person, to discuss the new project, which has been classified as the subject, tomorrow at 4 p.m., which has been classified as the date. And you can see in our utterances, it doesn't include every single entity in each one. There isn't a fixed number or, or any rules that say that any entity has to exist in the utterance in Lewis. So that's a quick look at the behind the scenes of the Lewis app that we have created and, and made available for you to use. Once you get comfortable with using our Lewis app, we encourage you to create your own so that you can expand upon it and take full control of the model. So let's step back over to our atbot admin portal on our Lewis intent vectors screen. We're gonna go ahead and click create intent vector. When using our demo apps, you want to always select a Western US region. Our Lewis intent vectors also support West Europe and Australia East, but you have to have your own Lewis models trained in those regions. So we're gonna select West US. Now we need a Lewis API key. So we're gonna go back to Lewis and this is where you're going to find that. If you go to your username up in the upper right hand corner, click on that and settings. And then it is this authoring key that you want to copy. We take that key back over to our intent vectors page and paste it into the Lewis API key box. Once we do that, it's going to load in the apps that we have access to. You can see the first thing that loads in is the Atbot demos. I have a number of other uh, Lewis models, uh, Lewis apps that I could that I could select from. But in our Atbot demos, we're going to select our set up a meeting intent and click create intent vector. A good thing to note is that you can only create one intent vector per Lewis intent. And we highly recommend you only have one Lewis app per bot to avoid any collisions. So now you can see that the set up a meeting intent uh, loaded in uh, the intent name. You can't change that here, but if it does change in Lewis, then it will update in here the next time you load it. Our Lewis API key, this is our authoring key that we will continue to uh, keep the way it is. And for you, uh, the authoring key that you used to create this intent, uh, you will wanna keep that the same as well. Uh, and then the Lewis endpoint key, this is a uh, programmatic key for uh, hitting the Lewis endpoint. And this can be any paid Lewis key you want. So you could go into Azure, create a new paid key, and put this in here, and that will have no limits. The authoring key can have a limit of 10,000 calls per month. So the first step in creating the Lewis intent, after you create the Lewis intent, is to set up the entities. So our first entity, we remember with create a meeting, it has uh, date time, it has meeting subject, and it has person. This problem thing entity exists here because our uh, report an issue intent uses the problem thing entity. In a Lewis app, the model contains all of the entities used within all of the intents. So when you create a Lewis app, and you're configuring an intent vector, you're gonna see entities from all of the Lewis intents in your model. So let's start with uh, date time v2, which is our, our date time that we're gonna capture from, from Lewis. And uh, the internal name will always stay what it is in Lewis, date time v2. We can change the display name. We're gonna call this meeting date. 
change the entity type, and this has to do with the way it can be collected in AtBot. A friendly description. And friendly description and display name are important because those are what's used in Flow once this skill gets kicked off and you can use, uh, you're able to identify those in the properties. Follow-up question is important when the user doesn't specify a date and the bot has to ask them for a date. So we're going to ask them if they can com please confirm the date of this meeting. The reason we're asking them to confirm is because if we get partial, a partial date and we're just asking for a portion of it, uh, please confirm the date of this meeting will be followed with what they're missing, which could be the time. Now we're going to add meeting subject. And this is going to, this is the meeting subject entity that comes back from Lewis. It is string, uh, it is a data type string. And we're just gonna put a space between meeting subject. And our question is going to be, What is the subject of the meeting? We're going to make that required, so if it's missing, the bot will ask the user for it. And then person is the last entity that we need to configure. And we're going to call this invitees. Change this to person, entity type. Friendly description is meeting participants. Follow-up question is, please confirm participants. And we're going to allow multiples to exist in this. And the reason we're saying please confirm participants is the user is always going to be asked to confirm the person that uh, we were able to find in the graph or that the bot was able to find in the graph. So if I say I want to invite Lisa and Mike, it's going to find a Lisa and a Mike using Microsoft Graph, so it's gonna find Lisa's and Mike's that I work with and uh, present them to me and allow me to confirm them, basically click on them and select those users. So there's our three mapped entities to the uh, Lewis intent coming over. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Update Vector. Now, this Lewis intent vector is ready to use in Flow to create a skill. So let's hop over to flow. We're going to create a new flow. We're going to search for at bot. It's an at bot logic action or trigger rather. When a registered intent is used. So now this is a new trigger. Um, when an intent is used is the, the uh, original trigger from at bot. Uh, which allows for keyword and Lewis-based triggers. And when a registered intent is used, it is specifically designed for intent vectors. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. I've already been logged into this, uh, so it, it automatically has me uh, ready to go. I'm going to say my trigger description is send a meeting invite. I'm gonna set this one to personal because I'm just testing it. And my Lewis intent vector, I only have one. I set up, uh, set up a meeting intent vector. And then that's it. So let's go to a new step. We'll add an action. And we'll just expect that everything's gonna work, right? So I'm gonna go to Office 365 Outlook. I want to create an event. And my calendar. The subject. Now looky there, we have all of the properties that came over from that intent vector. So my subject is meeting subject, here it is. My start time is meeting date, we'll go with UTC. And my end time, we'll actually use an expression we're gonna use the meeting date uh, plus one hour. And then my attendees 
I can't just click on invitee's email address or UPN or user ID because they are a collection. So what I'm going to have to do is in the middle, I'm going to add a select action. where from invitees, I want to select email address. And then I'm going to add another action. If we look down here under uh, required attendees, um, separated by a semicolon. So up in our, we're going to do a join. From the output of our select, we're going to join with a semicolon. That's right. So now under required attendees, we're going to take the output of the join. We're going to add one more step at the bottom here to tell the user that the meeting has been set. So we're going to use an at bot. And you can see actually in here, one other interesting uh, thing to note is there is a get intent vector response from user action as well. So this doesn't always have to be a trigger. You can inject this at bot uh, action to use an intent vector to get uh, user intent and entities uh, in the middle of a flow, not just at the beginning. So we're going to just send a reply, just let the user know uh, your meeting is all set. And of course, the at bot reply activity goes in reply activity. We'll give this a quick name and create the flow. Now let's go over to Teams and try it out. So in our app bot, we'll type help and go over to our personal skills. Make sure we have, yep, send a meeting invite is under natural language because that's what an intent vector is. That's a natural language trigger. So then let's go ahead and say, set up a meeting with Mick at 4 p.m. today to talk about the new intent vector video. So now it's going to ask me to confirm the participants. So this is the mapping of person to my intent vector. So I'm going to say it was Mick. And it just comes back and says your meeting's all set because uh, 4 p.m. today was seen as the date and talk about the new intent vector video was seen as the subject. Now if I go to my calendar, open this up and here it is you can see the meeting was created for Mick to talk about the new intent vector video it was created at 8 p.m. because uh, I said I set it to UTC I probably should have set it to local um, flow and date times can take a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, trial and error to get the dates right but everything looks good super simple I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that meeting and Let's try a different way. So we, we specified a, a person, a date, and a subject in this one. What if I, all I do is specify a person? So set up So the same intent vector is getting kicked off. It's asking me to uh, confirm the participants. So I'm going to say it's Lisa. Can I confirm the date? Let's do it uh, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. That is correct. And then it should ask me, what's the subject of the meeting? Go over flow date handling to avoid 
issues in videos. And now it says my meeting's all set. So now I go back over to Outlook and open that one up, and there it is. Same time issues, but again, that's just a flow date handling thing that needs to be worked out. So you can see it's super, super easy to set up the intent vectors, to wire them into your Lewis intents, and then to use them in flow to do something. This Lewis demo app that allows for setting up of meetings with people at a certain time for a certain subject, along with setting out of office and reporting an issue, are available for you to use with your own authoring key. We're really excited about what Lewis intent vectors bring to AppBot, and we hope you are too. Thanks for watching.